Good day, everybody. I hope you are all in good health. I welcome you to today's lecture. It is the second lecture for the semester. Before we move into the lecture for today, I would like us to have a review of what we studied last week. Last week, we got introduced to the academic discipline of African studies. We studied what African studies is. We looked at the origin of African studies, the reasons or the purpose for the study of African studies. And then we also looked at some of the problems or the challenges facing African studies. In a quick review, we said African studies was an academic discipline which focuses on studying the people of Africa on the African continent and the African diaspora. It involves the study of their history, their politics, their culture, their religion, their art, medicine, and so forth and so forth. We also studied that as young students or as young African scholars, it is important for you to study African studies to expose you to your cultural background and heritage. Also to dispel some of the misconceptions that Africans have or Europeans and other race have about African. It is also to reconscientize the mind of the African so that he or she will come to appreciate his or her own cultural backgrounds, your own roots. And then you get to know that there are certain misconceptions about the African people, which is not a reflection or a true representation of who we are as Africans. In terms of the problems facing African studies, we talked about the lack of trained personnel. We also talked about the lack of support, government support in terms of the establishment of institutes and departments of African studies to champion the course or degrees in African studies. Today, we are going to continue from where we stopped last week. Today, our focus is on two main sessions. We are going to look at the factors that accounted for the late development of African studies. Afterwards, we will also look at some of the misconceptions that have been told about the African people. Okay, at the end of today's lecture, at the end of this lecture, you as a student should be able to explain the factors that delayed the development of African studies as a field of study in Africa. Secondly, you should be able to mention and explain some of the misconceptions that have been told about the African people. Thirdly, you should also come to know and be able to tell and explain the reasons that accounted or underpinned the misconceptions about Africa. Okay, so last week we already learned or established that Prior to the, or after independence, some African leaders came together or some African leaders and scholars thought that it was necessary or it was about time. The African told the African story from his or her own perspective and that it was about time for, Af for other people to also come to learn about Africans and for Africans to undertake research to dispel some of the misconceptions about Africa. But if you look at the time Ghana gained independence, which was in the year 1957, and the time that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, established the first Institute of African Studies in Ghana, 1961. That time period is a period of four years. So today, we are asking ourselves, what are the reasons that caused Dr. Kwame Nkrumah to take a period of four years. In certain African societies, it took even much longer periods for the establishment of an Institute of African Studies in Ghana. So our focus at this moment is to look at some of the factors that underpin all the reasons why the development of African studies in Africa was delayed. I have categorized the reasons into four main reasons. The first is the philosophical argument. The second is the historical reason. The third, we will look at the role of the missionaries. And the final one, we will look at the role of Africans themselves. 
let's begin with a philosophical argument. Here it says that Africa was not part or Africa did not have any form of civilization. When you look at scholars like John Borges or William Summer, they argue that Africa was an inferior race. We were an inferior people with an inferior mind. This meant that we did not have the intellectual capacity or we did not have the intelligence to be able to establish a course, teach it, even research into whatever we want to do to produce knowledge for the people. When you establish African studies as a course or as an academic field of study, you should be able to produce knowledge, write books, articles, so that people who want to study African studies will be able to get the needed resources to help them in their studies. But if Africans are an inferior race with an inferior mind, it means that they did not have or we did not have the intellectual capacity to do intellectual research come out with books that we can use in teaching African studies in our schools. For this reason, and the fact that Africans did not have any civilization and have not contributed to any civilization in the world, the Europeans argued that African studies could not be established in Africa. It took African scholars to also offer a counter argument that no, what the Europeans were saying was wrong. And that indeed, Africa is not an inferior race and the people do not have inferior minds. Rather, we are just as intelligent as they are. And if African studies is established as an academic discipline, Africans are going to be capable of producing knowledge to serve as resource materials when it comes to the teaching and the learning of African studies. Similarly, Africa had a civilization. In fact, Egypt is known to be the cradle of civilization, which means that archaeological findings or research shows that civilization began in Egypt. And Egypt is found on the African continent. This implies that the civilization the Europeans were using as an argument to prevent Africans from establishing African studies was wrong because the civilization actually began from here. So that argument was refuted. The second argument was historical, the historical reason. What was this about? The Europeans argued that Africans do not have any history. This, we learned last week, was due to the reason that most of African societies were non-literate societies. We did not have the skill of writing. Because of that, our history was not documented down when the Europeans came to Africa. Rather, we transmitted our history or we told our history orally by word of mouth. But the Europeans offered a very narrow definition of history. According to them, history is what is written. This means that if you don't have a written history or a written story about yourself, you do not have history. For this reason, they concluded that Africans did not have any history. Moreover, Africa has not contributed in any way to the development of the history of the world. So the African scholars also argue that no, the definition that these Europeans are offering to describe or to define what history is, is a narrow one. History is not all about what is written. In fact, what is transmitted orally is also part of history. And the fact that a particular group of people have not written down their history does not mean that they do not have a history and that archaeological findings have also shown that Africa has contributed in so many ways to the history of the world. We can further explain that in African studies, 
one of the subjects or one of the disciplines that is taught is African history. So the Europeans are arguing that you Africans do not even have a history. So how are you going to teach African history to your people or to even non-Africans? If there is no history, then what is there to be learned about you Africans? But African scholars also argued to refute the arguments of the Europeans. The third point is the work of the missionaries. The missionaries are religious leaders or the religious people who came to Africa to propagate the gospel to us. Anybody who spreads the word of his or her religion is a missionary. So the missionaries came to Africa. They came to meet us. But let's not forget that before they came, we had our own religion, the African traditional religion. We practiced our religion in our own way. But because our traditional practice or our traditional religion was different from what the Europeans practiced, they looked down upon our religion. They saw that in our religion we were offering human beings as sacrifice. Indeed, when an offense had occurred, and the gods had to be pacified for the good of the community. Sometimes, depending on the gravity of the offense, the gods required that there should be a human sacrifice in order to cleanse the land of whatever defilement or whatever transgression or whatever sin or wrong that somebody has committed to defile the land. So the Europeans thought that our religion was not the best. They said we worship so many gods. So they said Africans are polytheistic. They have so many gods that they are worshiping. So they had a narrow understanding of our religion. So they came in and they introduced Christianity. The Arabs also came in and they introduced Islam. It also came with the formal education. You know, when the missionaries came, whenever they established the church, they established a school in addition to the church. So when people come to church for worship, they also come to school. The European used their form of education as a way to take the African away from his cultural background and his cultural practices. So the formal education was such that it took the African away from his cultural roots. Once you become educated or you accept to become a Christian, you no longer dress the traditional way. You no longer spoke a traditional or local language. You rather speak English. You no longer eat the food the African people were eating. You were rather introduced to the white food. Because of this, and the kind of perception the missionaries had about Africans, they wrote a lot of things about us, which gave us a bad image. They said our religion was primitive, so our culture too was primitive. They said we were savages, we were barbaric. All of these notions gave Africans a very bad perception or a very bad image about themselves to the outside world or to the Europeans. So when Africans were championing for the establishment of African studies, they argued that from what we have read, reports from the missionaries, it indicates that you are not a people worth studying. You are a people who do all sorts of barbaric activities. You are a society which, is, which has not progressed or probably does not even have the possibility of progressing. Because of this, what is there to be learned about you as a people? So our African scholars also argued that most of the things that Europeans have written or reported about Africa or the African people 
are not accurate. Rather, they are misrepresentations about us. They also argued that because of the bad perception or the bad image that Africa have due to what the missionaries have said, it was very important for Africans to establish African studies so that they can write about themselves, explain our cultural practices for people who do not know to come to know. I think it was an opportunity for the African to tell his or her own story so that non-Africans will come to learn about Africa the way we practice our culture, offer explanations and reasons to why we practice certain practices so that the bad image people had about Africa will be corrected. The fourth point is the role of Africans themselves. This has to do with what the African did against him or herself, against our own selves. Africans, through our own attitudes, projected us as very bad people or people with bad image to the European or the outside world. The Africans were those selling, catching their own Africans and then selling them to the Europeans as slaves. African leaders or African chiefs were the one used as stoots. The British employed indirect rule where they ruled the Africans through their own chiefs. When they were asked to go and collect tax from the African people, some of the chiefs would increase the amount they were supposed to collect. Some of the chiefs actually put their own people into a lot of misery. So the white man or the Europeans were of the view that Africans have not even treated themselves well. And these attitudes gave a bad image about Africa to the Europeans. And for this reason, they were of the view that Africa is not a place worthy to be studied or even incorporated into the entire educational curricula to be studied. In fact, there was nothing good to be studied about the African and that Africans themselves did not have anything good to offer or to teach other than Africans. It equally took some scholars to also argue that some of these things are inaccurate and that they are in fact the reasons why Africa or African studies should be established. So what have we been saying? In summary, what we are saying is that when African leaders saw the need for the establishment of African studies as an academic discipline, that dream did not come into reality immediately. Rather, certain reasons or there were certain things that caused the realization of that dream to be delayed. And some of these reasons we have mentioned are the philosophical arguments, the historical reasons, the work of the missionaries, and the role of Africans themselves. Africans had to offer counter arguments or narratives to the Europeans to give them more solid reasons why African studies should be established as an academic discipline. So there were Arguments for and arguments against. The Europeans will offer their opinion. The Africans will also offer a counter opinion to refute what the Europeans have said. Eventually, African studies came into being, even after it was delayed. Let's move on to the next topic for today. Misconceptions about Africa. Beginning from last week to date, 
I keep saying misconception, misconception, misconception about Africa. So the question is, what is a misconception? Simply put, a misconception refers to an incorrect view or opinion. It can be a false or an inaccurate information, a distorted view, a misunderstanding that a person or somebody have about something. It can be about a person, a place, or a group of people. This is usually due to a faulty thinking or a faulty understanding you have about that given thing. So when we say misconceptions about Africa or misconceptions of Africa, all what we are trying to say is that there have been certain opinions or views or information which have been said about the African, which are incorrect, inaccurate, or false to some extent. And what are some of these misconceptions? One of them is that Africans have no history. In this course, we have indicated that the fact that Africans did not have a written history did not mean that they did not have a history. Africans had their own form of history, which had to be recognized by the Europeans. In fact, archaeological findings have shown that indeed, Africa as a continent have a history. The second is that Africans are uncivilized. This is not true because in actual fact, civilization began in Africa and spread to other parts of the world. Again, there is the view or the opinion that Africa is a continent of crisis which means that it's a continent full of conflict, poverty, corruption, all the bad things you can think about. Yes, you may find some conflicts in Africa. You may find some poverty. You may find corruption happening in some countries in Africa. But these crises or these bad or negative ideas, they are not peculiar to only Africa. They do not prevail in only Africa. They can be found in several other societies, including Europe, including Britain, the United Kingdom, including America, Asia, all parts of the world you can think of. So it is therefore inaccurate for anyone to tag Africa as a continent of crisis, simply because you find some acts of corruption or poverty or conflict in Africa. If we cannot tag Europe as a continent of conflict or corruption or poverty, even though you find some level of corruption or poverty in their countries or on, in that continent, then same cannot be said about Africa. Africa is a dark continent, another misconception. When we say Africa is a dark continent, it simply means that Africa is a continent which does not progress. We are stuck in one phase. We do not move from one stage to the other. But do you think that is true? Africans have come a very long way. The Iron Age, the colonial period, to post-colonial period, and now the 21st century, Things are not the same in Africa. In fact, even before the Europeans came to meet us for the first time, before colonialism even began and slave trade was introduced, Africans had progressed. But because the Europeans did not know of our past, they thought that what they have come to meet or the state they had come to meet us, that is where we have been ever since we came to habit the African continent. Another one is Africans are inferior people with inferior minds, which is also very inaccurate. In fact, Africans are people who are very intelligent. Do you know Dr. Ben Carson? Yes, I know you know him. You may have heard his name. 
He's a neurosurgeon living in the United States of America. For a very long time, whenever twins were born stuck together, they were called the Siamese twins. Any time an operation or a surgery was embarked on to separate the twins, they ended up losing their lives. Dr. Ben Carson was the first African to successfully conduct a surgery on Siamese twins and both children survived. He was an African. He is an African. Can, if Africans are people with inferior minds, will Dr. Ben Carson been able to do what he did? And he's not alone. There are a lot of Africans out there doing great things for their countries and for the world as a whole. Africans are also tagged as barbaric, primitive, and savage. All what we are trying to say is that all these perceptions or all these information or things you hear about Africa is not a true representation about the African people. Some of them are wrongly misunderstood. They do not prevail only in Africa, but in other continents as well. It is therefore wrong or inaccurate for anyone to tag Africa with these negative perceptions. So what are some of the reasons accounting for these misconceptions? The question is, why did the Europeans have or have these notions about the African continent and the African people? The first one is that Africans did not have, or Africa did not have any written record to show their history and to tell their own story. When the Europeans came to Africa, if they had a written record of our past, knew where we came from and how far we have come, probably they wouldn't have said we did not have a history. Again, the early Europeans, some of them deliberately distorted the facts about Africa and the African people. The things they reported about us, they deliberately misrepresented Africa to the world, which gave that perception about Africa to the outside world. The next one is that most Europeans or the Europeans were ethnocentric. When we say ethnocentric, what it means is that the Europeans and the Western people were assessing the African culture through their own culture. So they use their culture as a yardstick to measure our own culture. This means that whatever the African did different from what the Europeans did was wrong or was tagged as primitive. In the European culture, they worship only one God. In the African culture, they worship so many gods. Oh, then the African religion is not good. In Europe, we do things like this, but Africans do it this way. Oh, then the Africans are like this, then the Africans are like that. When Europeans assessed our culture from their own perspective, their own narrow view, and not how our own culture was like, it gave them a lot of bad perceptions about us. Again, the Europeans were ignorant about the Africa's past. They knew nothing about our past. And so they could say a lot of things which were not true about us. And these misconceptions are spread through the media. When you watch television programs, when you watch movies, when you listen to the news, when you read articles, books, and other publications about Africa, you see a lot of these things projected in there, putting Africa in a bad light or in a bad image. Today, our lecture 
is informing us that these ideas that Africa has no history, Africa is uncivilized and the rest, are just misconceptions about Africa. Some of them are totally untrue. Some, yes, you may find them in Africa, but they do not prevail only in Africa, which means that it is not an African thing. Rather, it is a human nature thing, which can be found in other continents of the world. It is therefore wrong or inaccurate for anyone to tag the African as this, as that, as this, because those things can be found in other places. This is where we bring today's lesson to a close. I am Grace Opari. We will meet next week for the next lecture. Thank you.